Hello, and welcome to the East-West Quantum Leap Symphonic Orchestra. I'm David Earle, and it's my pleasure to introduce you to this unique and essential orchestral library. In the mid-2000s, Doug Rogers and Nick Phoenix had already created fantastic, award-winning libraries that fit every producer, engineer, and sound designer's needs. After this successful run, they decided to challenge themselves with the most ambitious project to date. They wanted to create the most comprehensive, best scripted, and most meticulously recorded orchestral library ever made. This is the only product to win the Sound on Sound Reader's Choice Award three times. This project took years to create and program. There were hundreds of people involved. One of the biggest fingerprints, though, on this library came from the legendary recording engineer, Keith O. Johnson, also known as The Professor. He had well over 90 recordings under his belt at the time this library was created, and many of those recordings are award winners. He had received three Grammys and eight nominations at that time. Professor Johnson developed his own recording techniques and equipment and applied all of that to this library. He was also instrumental in getting access to the various concert halls for recording. His contribution to this library was immense. All of the aspects of the orchestra play very well together, much like the Hollywood Orchestra. I actually blend these two libraries together a lot. I find the symphonic orchestra has its own sound, and I really enjoy writing with it. This library has been a staple in many composers' diets since its release and continues to be used in every medium. Let's have a look inside this orchestra. This is a piece of music by a composer named Ron Raymond. All of this piece is using the East-West Symphonic Orchestra. Check it out. Pretty cool, right? So that's all using nothing but the East-West Quantum Leap Symphonic Orchestra. And as you see, this is a really nice template made up of all of those instruments. This library is, by today's standards, is a lot more lightweight on the CPU and the hard drive than, say, the Hollywood series, but it's immense. It has all kinds of articulations for every kind of instrument you could imagine and you can build a really extensive template just using the symphonic orchestra. Let's get inside the play engine and see how this orchestra is organized. I'll come over here to the browser, and inside the browser we can see on the left-hand side, if I come down to symphonic orchestra, we can see brass, percussion, strings, and woodwinds. Inside these folders, you'll see the various articulations. Long, short, effects, mod wheel crossfade, key switch, and then old key switches. In all of the libraries, you'll see that this is pretty much the same, except for the percussion, where they just have the individual instruments because the crossfades and, and various types of MIDI control aren't as necessary. In the orchestral strings library, we have groups of instruments, so say three cellos or ten cellos, four violins or eleven violins, and then we have harp, harpsichord, large string ensembles, which has up to 50 and 70 piece orchestras. We also have chamber orchestras and string quartets, all in one patch. And then we have various solo instruments. Inside of each of these, You'll see things like, it says 3VC sus vib. You'll want to get used to all this nomenclature to be sure that you know what you're playing around with. So in this case, it's going to be vibrato, and we have a sustained instrument, so it's going to keep playing as we hold it down. If we go to something like the double basses, you'll see things like EXP for expression, which has a multi vibrato, large vibrato tail on it. And then we have things like, you know, portamento, port legato, tremolo legato, 
you want to go through all the manuals and make sure that you understand how these articulations work. Going into the brass, you can see that we have some really unique brass instruments. Wagner tuben, which are really <laughs> wonderful brass instruments, and they were uh, pretty rare to find in libraries at the time this library came out. We have a section of four trombones, four trumpets, six French horns, and then we have solo instruments for the brass. In woodwinds, very similarly, we have groups of instruments, clarinets, flutes, and oboes. And then we have solo instruments such as bassoon, contrabassoon, English horn, bass clarinet, solo oboe, solo piccolo flute. The player is the interface where we see things like our system settings, MIDI port, channel, transpose, minimum velocity, maximum velocity, voice limiting, and bit depth. When you have the Platinum Plus series, you could actually choose between 24-bit and 16-bit. We have the sensitivity of our velocity, performance scripts, a volume envelope so that we can really shape the attack, decay, sustain, and release of the sound. We also have hold, which is before the decay stage. On the right-hand side, we have stereo doubling to give you a little bit more of a wide stereo effect. Underneath that, we have our built-in Impulse response driven convolution reverb. Pretty awesome to have that available. Then we have our microphone positions. There are actually three separate mic positions close, stage, and surround. You can mix them together using these faders, and then you can pan the sections as you like. You'll note that the stage and the surround are panned up the center, default, and then this close mic is actually panned a little bit to the left. The reason that the close ones are panned to the left is because the microphones are right on the instrument, so they want to pan them so that the section sounds natural when you're playing the close mics with the stage mics. But you can feel free to mess with that panning if you like. On the right-hand side, we have our master output, tuning, panning, and then our output for our DAW. Like if we're going out one and two, we would go out output one and two. If we're using a multi-output instrument, then we could select other outputs as well. You can also select separate outputs for the individual mic sets, which is pretty cool. CPU and disk usage, voices, RAM. Then down below we have our keyboard. When you see the keys in white, that means it's a playable area of that instrument. And then on the left-hand side, you'll usually see some blue keys, which were going to be key switches when you're using a key switched instrument. In the center here, we have our articulations. This is showing us what articulations are loaded right now, ready for playback. So that's the player, let's check the mixer. In play five, we're given a mixer that we're able to use. If you select the set of faders right here, it shows you the different mic positions and allows you to do your blend here if you like. In our effects section, we have the ability to use an amp simulator for feeling, you know, Hans Zimmery. <laughs> We've got Omicide, which is a multi-channel distortion unit, it's pretty cool an SSL channel strip. So check it out. We have compression, EQ, transient design, all of this by SSL, which is very, very cool. We have the SSL bus compressor. And then this is another view of that convolution, that reverb that we were talking about before. Now that we've explored the player, browser, and mixer, let's have a gander at some of these sounds. So here I have a flute. And I can play the flute with harmonies. But what if I want to play it like a solo flute? Well, what I can do, if the patch says legato, like it does up here, that means that if I turn on the legato script, it turns the instrument from polyphonic to monophonic, and it's going to do some cool things to make it sound like a real solo flute. It makes the instrument very playable and very expressive. So that's how the performance script works. So look out for anything that says legato, because it will have the ability to really take advantage of that. As we come down through the instruments, we have an oboe as well. I can also switch that to legato, but let's see what happens, because I don't see legato in the script.
So you'll note that legato many times works no matter what. Now this repetition script, what that does is many times you'll use patches that say RR, which means round robin. But what this repetition script does, it adds a little bit of randomness to some of the uh, notes that you're hitting so it sounds like a different sample. It's kind of a neat trick. Going down into our staccato instruments, these are shorter scripts. So you'll note up here that it says three clarinet staccato, but then it says RR times three. That means round robin. Then we have our solo clarinet, and it says sustain legato. So if I hold a note, it'll keep going on forever. If I add legato, so polyphonic, right? I'll add legato. It's important to note that when you're going through this library, you want to look at the patches and see what kind of an effect the mod wheel or expression or controller seven is going to have on the library. Here's a nice bassoon. And here's a second bassoon. You'll see that it says sustain legato as well. If we go into the browser real quick, and I look into the bassoon and I see mod wheel crossfade. I have different ways that the mod wheel can be engaged. Here's a vibrato crossfade. So I'm going to play a couple notes and I'm going to use the mod wheel to affect vibrato. makes things way more expressive. Getting into the horns, what's kind of neat about the horns is not only do we get a very large horn section, but we also get, so here's our six French horns, right? But if we want to, we could also patch together some solo French horns and make those work as well. That can be kind of fun. In the French horns, I particularly like, look at all this. <laughs> I mean, we have sustains and layers, we have layer smooth, we've got sforzando, we've got something called Q legato, which is a specific kind of legato script that was created specifically for this orchestra. In striving for very playable legato patches, East West came up with this thing called Q legato, where basically every note that you play has a legato and a non-legato note, and the timing, it's going to sense the timing of your playing and decide which note to play. When they were creating these scripts, they really wanted to make everything playable. Uh, it was really important to Doug and Nick to be sure that the way that Legato was performed is, is pretty easy to implement, and this is no exception. We get things like adventure horns. I like this patch a lot. The adventure articulation is really fun because it's got this strong accent on the beginning if you use velocity. So it can be played thematically. Or you can play it in chords and add accents with velocity. Cool stuff. It's got a really nice attack to it. Going through these libraries, it's very important to go through all of the articulations and see what might be special about them. In the case of the stops, this is when you're placing your fist inside of the uh, bell of the French horn. Check out these stops. And let's try fast. What you'll notice in this library is the quality of the recording is astounding. 
And I actually do use this alongside the Hollywood series as well. I think that it's got a real sort of bright quality to it that, that I really enjoy. Then you have things like two trumpets where I personally love using things like the repetitions. Trumpet players can do double tonguing and triple tonguing to make these really fast lines on single notes. And the repetitions, you can go as fast as you like, and it'll always catch up. It'll always, you know, keep up. Now, when we get to the mutes, so these are straight mutes, and essentially they're placed in the bell of the instrument um, to give it this real kind of strange metallic nasal quality. What's great about these mutes is that there's six layers of dynamics, so you can get a lot out of it by playing around with velocity. So we have two trumpets, and we have four trumpets. When we get into the four trumpets, we have things like forte piano, and what's really fun is to go into the effects. So here's crescendo. For your matrix score. If we go into the two trumpet effects, we have some really fun stuff. These rips can be a lot of fun to put to ornament a score. Coming down into the percussion, we have a whole set of cymbals. Cymbal rolls, gongs, all kinds of fantastic percussion instruments. I still very routinely go into this library just to get into the gongs and the cymbals. You'll see that there's an all cymbals patch and an all gongs patch, which actually puts all of the cymbals and all of the gongs on a single layer of, you know, a single instrument, which is great. Nick Phoenix is an amazing drum engineer. And so as you'll see, there's plenty of choice in your cymbals and they're very specific. So we have Zildjian's, we have a German cymbal, Viennese cymbal. They all have very different sounds. It's very, very cool that we get so detailed when we get into the percussion. In the drums, we have things like marching snares. You'll see that we have dynamic crossfade rolls. So if I load up something like three snares. I'm using my mod wheel to create dynamics. Super handy. We have amazing bass drums. We have a Wagner bass drum and a concert bass drum. Field ensemble snares. We've got taiko drums and timpanis, everything you could need. And again, DXF means dynamic crossfade. That's when the mod wheel gets engaged to do dynamic crossfades. In the metals, we have things like anvils and we have uh, artillery shells, which is a particularly fun one. Actual artillery shells being used as percussion instruments. They even have different sizes of anvils. It's pretty ridiculous. But in the metals, what we also get is we get things like a vibraphone and a waterphone. These are pretty amazing. This is a bowl of water with spikes coming off of it that you can either bow or play. It's in horror score. Getting into the woods, we have like all sticks, which is another collection that's placed across the entire keyboard of different stick-based instruments. We have tambourines and we have pulley sticks and slap sticks for when you're playing sleigh ride. Um, <laughs> we have washboard, which how many times do you see that in a library? Wind machine. The wind machine is pretty interesting. I got to just load that one up real quick. 
The wind machine is essentially a large piece of canvas that's draped over a wooden drum that can be rotated underneath it, and the friction of the wood and the cloth makes this sound. It's an amazing old Foley technique. Really neat stuff. Wood blocks and, of course, xylophone. The percussion is fantastic, and I'm constantly coming back to this library as well. Just for these percussion, the way that they're recorded just sounds very unique. Strings. We have three cellos and ten cellos. So we have small ensembles, or we have full orchestra. You'll note that we have four violins for a smaller ensemble, and then we have 11 and 18 violins. So these would be your first violins, and these would be your second violins. When we get into these libraries, the smaller libraries, you'll see, have less choice in terms of what you're going to have available to you. But when you start getting into the larger sections, of course, all kinds of choice. You have everything from various types of legato, expressive, uh, multi vibrato patches. We've got non vibrato to sustain crossfade. We've got the Q legato system, a run simulator, which is kind of interesting if you do this run simulator. You can make these very fast runs. And it sounds really good. And we have some interesting articulations like sordino. Con sordino means with mute. So that strings with a mute on the strings. Really neat. Again, very unique. When we get into the short articulations, check it out. We have Bartok pizzicato, which is going to be sort of a pulling of the string uh, instead of, it's like a pizzicato, but you're letting it slap against the fingerboard. Then we have marcato. We have Mardale up down. So UD means up and down. It's going to switch between an up bow and a down bow, which is pretty cool. We also have round robins on pizzicatos, which is great. Again, it's going to be a velocity sensitive layer. And then we have quick up and down. So if I choose something like this, it's very good when you're going like. So the short articulations, there's just a whole lot of them. And when you get into the effects section, this is when things get really neat. Like the Penderecki clusters, check this out. So many extended techniques. Now when we get into the key switch patches, you have a master and elements. So if we go into the master, all of the articulations are loaded right now. And on the left hand side, you see all these blue keys. Those show us where the key switches are happening. What I'm gonna do is play through this instrument and go through the key switches to show you all the different articulations that are loaded in this one patch. Now, there's a philosophy behind this of like composers like to write all of their violin articulations on a single track so that, you know, A, it's easier to write the score. Um, well, that's pretty much it in terms of my book. You get one track that has all of the violin articulations and you switch between them using key switching. That's one philosophy. Another philosophy is you load all of the individual articulations on separate tracks so it's a little easier to see. That's really going to be up to you. Along with the strings, we have violins, which are pretty much the same in terms of how they're laid out, except the 11 violins, you get some additional effects, 
like you'll get your trills and your tremolos in here. And look at this, violin scratching effects. Again, those extended techniques are pretty amazing. The double basses, they have some great effects in here as well that you should check out. Um, but, you know, same sort of thing. We have pizzicato, we have quick up and down. There's all of our legato and sustain patches. It's pretty easy to figure out. Along with all of the string sections, the cellos, the basses, the violins, the violas, we have harp. So we have different harp types. I love this harp harmonics. We have various effects. And of course, you're going to have your glisses. Harps are really beautiful. This entire library is just recorded so well. Harpsichord, large string ensembles. So this is pretty amazing. Essentially, you have it laid out so you can play like a piano player and play an entire orchestra. So if I go to something like, here's a 70-piece orchestra recorded close. stuff. Chamber ensemble, but played flat hondo, so very close to the bridge. We have our solo instruments, solo viola, solo violin. I'll still use these along with the Hollywood solo series, because they have their own vibe. And also there's some effects that you get with the solo instruments that are pretty cool. So all in all, that is the Quantum Leap Symphonic Orchestra, made in the mid 2000s, still sounds phenomenal. And uh, I often come back to this. I actually have a personal memory with this library because I worked on my first big AAA video game using this orchestra and created a mass, my first massive template using this orchestra. So I often come back to it and use it for my compositions. And I highly recommend it to composers because of its versatility and the sheer beautiful tone and power of this library. Like the strings especially, you'll get this kind of rosiny feel to them that isn't really the same in any other library. This really cuts through the mix. So there you go. I'd like to play a demo for you now so you can hear what this library is really capable of. And I'll see you next time. Ciao.